I believe he was saying this morning really clearly, uh, pay attention to the cues. They're gentle. But um, those directions are very, they're key uh, for a lot of things in your life. Pay attention to those cues with your children. Pay attention with, to those cues when he, uh, what he's directed you to do. Amen. Hey, let's pray before we get into the word. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your word, that it is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light that shines ahead to where we're going. Thank you that the plans that you have for us, they're good, uh, that they're all planned out. Lord, I thank you that you open our eyes to see um, you more clearly this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody that agreed said, oh, you just agreed to something. You just agreed to something. You just said amen, so be it, that my eyes would be open. You know, this morning we're going to start a series uh, called Fundamentals, and if you throw that graphic up there, um, I put this dollar sign uh, on the end because it makes people really uncomfortable sometimes to talk about money. And, um, but I want to talk this morning, uh, you're going to find that I don't really mention anything, uh, well, about money this morning yet, because there's something foundational to all of this. To, to, you know, the Bible talks about how money is the least of things, right? And if you can't steward that well, he can't, how are you going to be entrusted with the other things, right? So we, want, we believe in stewardship hugely here. We believe it, uh, that everything, we, I believe that, that, that everything that I have is the Lord's, all right? It, the Bible t- tells us this. There's a lot of things that the Bible tells us. And, um, <clears throat> and the question is, am I submitted to what he says or am, is, it, is it my way, Right? But I wanted, I wanted to look at, uh, we wanted to look over the next, you know, four weeks. We got a, a guest, uh, our, one of our board members coming in in the week between uh, John Grunewald. So you'll want to be here for that. Sharp, sharp guy. Super sharp guy um, from, from the States, but has been in Germany for, gosh, 20, 30 years. And uh, leads uh, multiple organizations. He's just a sharp dude. So you want to be here and hear what he has to, to say and speak to our body. I'm excited about it. Uh, so that's at the weekend of the 23rd. So it would be the 23rd. So on the 23rd, you want to you be here. But um, on the bookend, so two and two, we're going to be talking about stewarding our finances. And... Uh, if I'm going to steward them well, I got to see them clearly. How many of you know I got to be aware of what's in my hand? I got to be aware. And so uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to break down fundamental this morning, uh, fundamentals. And um, did you know that fundamentals aren't something that you are just expected to know? You aren't just expected to know fundamentals. There are certain things your body does because God created it to do, right? But you didn't learn how to breathe, did you? Your body just did it. Because the creator had established something in you. There's some things, but there's some fundamentals. There's some things that, that we, uh, we have to be taught or we have to acknowledge, right? If we're going to operate by them. We're to be coached. I love, I love the word fundamentals and, and thinking about it in, the, in terms of coaching, you know? When you think about kind of fundamentals, I'm going I'm to define fundamental this morning. It's this, serving as a basis or supporting existence, okay? Uh, determining essential structure or function. This is what a fundamental is. It serves as a basis of the support of the existence or determining the essential structure or function. So that's a fundamental. It, it serves as the basis to the next level, right? How many of you, oh, that's fundamental, right? Have you ever, uh, let me, um, let me uh, throw this out here. Proverbs 29, 18, it says this, where there is, uh, without fundamentals, the Bible tells us that we're going to struggle. Without seeing something clearly, without having the most basics, I want you to see this. When people do not accept divine guidance, the, the creator. See, here's the deal. The fundamental thing about, about everything is, is, is the fact that we have a creator. The most fundamental thing that you and I could ever establish, and we're going to talk about this morning, is that, that we have a creator. And there is a divine guidance that we have to accept. If you'll put it back up there, please, so I can finish reading it. That'd be awesome. Okay, we have a divine, uh, uh, we, we, you know, when we, but there is a divine guidance, but guess what? Just because it's a fundamental doesn't mean you have to accept it. Yet, you will operate by it. Look here, they run wild, whoever, uh, uh, but whoever, 
whoever obeys the, uh, the law is joyful. So here, let's talk about this. Leave that up there, please. The law, the joyful, the, whoever obeys the law, there's some spiritual laws that God has created. But if you, don't, uh, if you don't submit to divine guidance, he says that you will run around wild. That word, actually, if you were to find it, if you're reading the King James and looking at Hebrew, it just means naked. To run around wild, you'd be naked. Don't, did we not see some people naked early on? They didn't receive divine guidance, did they? Remember Adam and Eve? Naked. They were always naked, but they were aware of their nakedness because, and they were more aware of their nakedness than their relationship with the Lord because of not accepting divine guidance. But those that would accept the law, oh, we're going to talk about law. Lots of law. Kind of like, the, kind of like basketball. Can, you, can somebody give me a couple of fundamentals of basketball? Left hand layup. That's fundamental. Come on, what else? Let me step. Dribble, dribbling? Who said dribbling? dribbling shooting? Fund, fundamentals? Of, what? The rules. There you go. He, and this guy knows it because I talked to him about that. He came into my office. I said, give me some fundamentals of basketball. He's like, dribbling, passing, shooting. I said, how about fundamental? The rules. You know, I never heard somebody, somebody play a basketball game and say, don't, don't try to put me under the law. <laughs> how about you? Anybody, did, did, you ever, did you ever watch basketball and get mad at the ref for blowing his whistle because it was a travel? And they were, or, or they dribbled and picked it up, dribbled, picked it up, dribbled and picked it up, and, and you get all mad. What are you trying to do, put me under the law? Now there's some, I'm, you pray that you, you said amen. You said amen this morning, and I, here's the deal. Unless we establish some, that there is divine guidance for our lives, and we're not talking about tithing this morning, okay? So just, just open your heart back up so that you can actually be free. Because every, anytime you talk about money, a lot of times the only thing between your heart and the Lord is your wallet. And you can see it in, 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 in giving, okay? You can see it, and you're saying, oh, don't talk to me like that. Listen, if I was to tell you to, to, to put money to where, where your family is versus where the Lord is, what you would invest in your family or versus what you'd invest in the Lord, you would say it would be way lopsided towards family. Am I saying you shouldn't take care of your family? No, I'm saying this. And the reason why you would do that is because you love your family. But we say that all the time. We love our family. But what does this say about where I'm telling you there's something about where we put our dollars. There's something about it. All right. But Again, I'm just, I'm hitting somebody square in the nose because that wasn't even supposed to be what I was talking about this morning, okay? But you've sat here for years, and every time the Lord wants to get something to you, you buck up. I'm going to throw up, I wasn't even going here, I'm going to get here in a second. Malachi chapter 3, he tells us to bring the tithes of the storehouse, Malachi 3.10. And see if I would not open the windows of heaven. So let me just, before, he wants to open something to you. He wants to open something. To, I didn't write that, that, that I would open the windows of heaven. I, the key, with, with, he, that's a key to open heaven. We see to, to you, things of heaven. We see this in Acts. Cornelius, he, he gave, and the Bible says that his gifts came up to the Lord, and God sent down a messenger, and all of his family was saved. I'm just telling you, if God's speaking to you about something, listen. Just open up, and then you, listen. Here's what's crazy. He says, you decide. You decide. But here's the deal. A lot of times we're like Job. Put it up there. I gave you one scripture for Job at the beginning. Um, it's probably uh, just a little ways down. Uh, Job chapter 40, or 32 rather, or 38 verse 2. This is how we do it, just like Job. And, and this is where, where God starts a conversation with Job because Job has been running his mouth. I'd love to talk to you about Job. Um, but Job's been running his mouth and complaining about how it, it, he ba basically, all, the latter part of Job is all is Malachi. Where he's tell, telling, telling his friends, it would be better if I was, a, I should have just been a sinner all along because it doesn't pay to be righteous. I don't even know why I pray because God doesn't listen anyway. And he's just running his mouth about God. Okay? 
And here God comes down and he says, who, who's ta- who's, who's, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Did you know there are a lot of people giving you a little bit of counsel and they haven't even read the Bible? Did you know there's a lot of preachers and pastors that are standing on stages today and they've not read through the Bible Not one time. And you're taking your counsel from that which there's no knowledge. It's like speaking like Job. When you speak something about grace or you speak something about law, blah, 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 whatever you want, however you want to call it, and you have no knowledge on the subject, this is God calling Job to account for that which he speaks because there's a lot of things that are spoken that simply darken counsel. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk with, in dark counsel. I'd rather have God's word illuminate my feet and see why I'm, why I'm in the stocks, okay? And, and shine ahead so that I don't fall off the ditch. I want, I, more than anything else, I want to walk in light. I, and, and the crazy thing is, is the Bible says that, that where there's truth, there's actually freedom. And we're going to get to the, all, it, it's amazing how it applies and how when we see him clearly, it's, it's amazing how w- 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 when, oh my gosh, it's so wonderful. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness, you're in for a good one this morning. Who is it that darkens counsel by speaking without knowledge? Listen, when you're talking with people and they're speaking opinions, all you're doing is darkening your counsel, building a case to you to walk in a way that's contrary to what God said. Let's go back to what God said. The greatest friend you could ever have would be a friend that would bring to you the word, that you could talk about the word, that you could have some God talks, not not, here's what I think talks. I'm telling you, you want freedom for your family, you want freedom for your children, you want freedom for your finances, you want peace in your home, you want joy for all your days. It's found in what God has said. And we say God, let's say, we 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 throw around this word God and Lord and like, what if we just said Yahweh? Again, like what if we used a word that maybe was a little bit stronger to you because Lord and God, oh my God. Oh my God. Can you believe that? Oh my God. That's what happens nowadays. It's not even, we don't even, we, we, we say GD. We don't have, we don't have, there's no honor to his name. Like still, when people say, oh my God, that still gets me like straight up. Like even doing what I'm doing right now, for example, is like, <sighs> you know. Like that's, that's that explanation. And it's thrown around like if you miss a, if you miss a shot or, or whatever. I'm just saying there's got to be an honor for his name. I love, I love, I, I, to, to some extent, I love, uh, I love, I love, I love, Sometimes I love Christians. Um, I, I know one of them, and it just it actually really blesses me. They'll eff, effity blank this, and none of them. Blah, blah, blah. But if you use the Lord's name in vain in front of them, oh, you dropped something way bigger and way worse, and you and they'll come unglued. Because, but I here's the, I love the fact that there's honor for His name, even if they're struggling. There's honor, and, I, and I'm like, okay, all right, I like that because I because I always it always gets me too. All right, <laughs> <sighs> praise the Lord. <laughs> let me let me go back to this this verse. Who uh, Job thirty eight? Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? He says this. Who is it that darkens counsel by not seeing everything? Who is this that darkens knowledge with, without having been there and knowing how it was created? And in this, this, the latter part of Job, God begins to ask him these questions about uh, who told the seas that they could only come this far? You tell me. You tell me. You tell me. And he begins to talk about creation. And it just, it just you go, oh my Lord, wow. Who, how, how, does the, how does the deer know to when to come in to cycle into the fall and, and so that in the spring they'd be able to give birth and their, their baby would be sustained? How does all these, there's, it's just, how does the, the tree know to put its energy back at its roots before winter comes so that it could spring forth again? How does all, and he begins to just hammer on things and with things that we don't have a clue and we don't know. It's like, wow, God, you are amazing. 
And at the end of this thing, Job actually repents and he says, I spoke too soon. I spoke without knowledge. Oh God, you're great. You're worthy to be praised. And in that place of repentance, God restores everything back to him. I, I can't go into Job because it would take too long. Psalms 19, 1 through 2. Listen to this. The cell phones declare. Oh, I bet we're missing some of the declaration because of all the things that we've built today. But it says the heavens declare. The heavens declare, that means speak. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies speak, proclaim. They loudly proclaim the works of His hands. Day after day, listen to this. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. Yet they speak no language. Yet they utter no words. The heavens declare. The skies proclaim. Day after day they speak. Night after night they reveal knowledge. Yet they don't use one word. Because where do they speak? Right here? No, right here. I'm telling you, if we would behold some of things, the things that God has created... You would, real, you, would, you would see God begin to speak. You would hear what he's saying it just, and reveal the greatness of God. I was sitting in a tree stand right at the end of, uh, just beginning of February, rather, and um, just sitting there, and I saw this limb uh, inside the woods uh, of a pine tree and uh, had broken off, and, and where it had broken off, sap spewed forth, you know, to heal the wound from the inside out. And I just thought, and I just began to, like, wow. It, it, it just, I just sat there and just thought, wow. It knows how to, he, how to heal from the inside out. What, a, what, a, what you could teach that. You could go upside one down the other and not look for it on the outside to try to make yourself whole. But no, it was from the inside out, and it, and it sealed it off. And what did it do? It kept growing. It kept growing. It was wounded, but it kept growing. And that was, it was healed. I mean, it was just it's something when you look. Look in Psalms 33, verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the word of the Lord. Did you know he's the one that established the rules? You want to call them rules? You can call them laws. A lot of times we think law is Ten Commandments, but law is spiritual principles. It's things that you can't argue with or not. It's, it's been declared. Whether you want to operate it by or not is not up to you because you're not the creator. And sometimes we, we associate law is, is do, do, do. No, law is established principles or facts or that which uh, everything is built upon. It's like the rules of basketball. It's the fundamental to the game. You will not go very far if you, and you will actually quit. More often than not, you'll quit if you won't surrender to the rules of the game. You, you'll be frustrated. There'll be no progress. You, you, you won't be able to steward well the gift that's on the inside. Like, you know, the kid that's in the driveway thinking, and you can see it, three, two. I can't tell you how many times we do this in the driveway. Three, two, one. Okay, Dad, again, three, two, one. Okay, Dad, one more time. Three, two, and it's never ending. We count down, and then, you know, maybe five, four, and they get a, get a little dribble in there, and then they take a shot. But how many of you know, if that's what you see, but you're not willing to su submit to the, the travel rule, you'll never be in position to take the shot. There are things that are in your heart that unless you're willing to surrender to something that God has said, you'll never be in position to take the shot. Yet your heart sees it. Why? Because you were created for it. There are things that you were created for that your heart sees that was God painted, yet it takes you surrendering to one of the things that he said or the drawing of, his heart, to, of your heart and the things he's speaking to you. And this is why I can't say, this is what God told me, so he's telling you, you know, because he's an individual God. Yet his law remains the same. But yet everyone's at a different place and he's talking to you about you, not talking to me about you. He's so good, he's so loving. Anytime he brings his word and he talks to me about picking the ball up and when I'm putting it down, picking it back up, listen, it doesn't work that way. 
But he doesn't go, what's your problem every time I'm, as I begin to struggle past that? How many of you know, when your kid doesn't know how to dribble a ball, and he picks it up a lot of times. But as a coach, do I say, and as a father, do I say, you idiot? You worthless? You're, you're never going to be. He's five. He's six. Listen, he might be 18. He just hasn't learned this before. Nobody ever told him because they didn't want to hurt their feelings. Because they didn't want to change the way that they play the game. And so he never got to play because no one's told him that. But all of a sudden, you, as a coach and as, as somebody says, oh, no, no, you, did you know that if, if you do this uh, and you've been getting blocked all your life, but you don't want to change the way that they shoot because they're heaving it from the hip. But if you would come up and you bring it up and over the top, you would be able to get your shot off. Yeah, you know, well, that's not what I do. That's how I, this is how I do it. Okay? That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Sit your butt down on the bench. Next. Next. Those that are with. Wi- Listen, you can do whatever you want. Listen, what you want. God gives you the choice, but just recognize what you're choosing. Let's see here. By the words of the Lord, the heavens were made. So let me tell you, the one that made the heavens has established the rules. But we're not even talking about rules this morning. We're talking about the greatness of the Lord. That is the most fundamental thing that we're ever going to grasp. It's so fun. There's some things that we don't talk about enough. Um, by the host of the, it says all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So all, all that you see was created by the breath of his mouth. Isaiah 40, 14, or 12 through 14. He who, uh, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. God's measured the, ho- the waters with what's in his hand. The breath of his hand, he's measured the heavens. He held the dust of the earth in a basket and weighed the mountains on his scales. This is who we're singing to this morning. This is who we just, it's okay to not sing and let somebody just play from their heart because we're standing in the presence of the one who is great and worthy to be praised. And he says this, that who can fathom the spirit of the Lord or who could instruct the Lord as his counselor? It's crazy how as things evolve, we like to change the rules of the game. How many know what I'm talking about? Because we know better. The game, what it was, it's not like it is today. Well, because we're in the 21st century and they need to get with the times. This was written back then. These rules, you know, uh, Naismith, he didn't understand when, when he was playing with, with the ball. Uh, I think it's Naismith, right? Uh, no, well, who is it that shot the, remember the peach? Naismith, yeah. The creator of basketball had a peach basket on a pole out in the yard. And he created this game called basketball. And then we had to add the three-point line. And then we had to, well, we should just change it to 12 foot. I've heard people say we should change the goals to 12 foot because people can jump higher. You know, I think the greatest thing that's ever happened is that when the rules were put, that we, and this is the th- thing, is, is, is men, men find a way to try to hit the rules. But yet then they want to change them. So it's, it's, it's like, I say the greatest thing, it's, it's the craziest thing. We try to hit the rules, but we want to change the rules. So we want, to, we want to try to make sure we make the rule, but then we all say, let's change the rule. So it's like we're unstable. We don't even know which is right in, in our ways. We want, to, we want to give to the Lord so he'll give to us, but yet we don't want to give to the Lord. But, we, but the fact is, is it's not my giving that, that gets anything. It's the fact that he already gave. So we're just confused in how we go about everything because we're willing to always change the rules to our era or what fits us today or how I fit in this season. Well, I'm going to give because in this season, I have extra. 
But as it comes into summer, I need to make sure I, I, I take care of my family and we can go on vacation. Or as it comes to Christmas, or when I've lost my job and I only have this much income, then all of that has to go and I don't acknowledge God in any of my stuff. Because it's this era. It's this season. But God doesn't change. And if we'd recognize that and recognize that he doesn't leave, and he wants our awareness of, of a God that is, has created the heavens, and he surely can get that job to you. The one that measured the, the seas in his hand, and surely he can restore that body. The one that, listen, that our awareness of that God in every season he doesn't want it to change. Listen, uh, verse 14. Who, who is it that, uh, that counsels, going to counsel or enlighten the Lord? And who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge or showed him the path to understanding? Was it you? Was it me? No, it's not me. Listen to this. 20 or 5.8 trillion miles in a light year. Let's just talk about this little speck in which we live for just a moment. In our solar system that the earth revolves around the sun, not around me, not around you, but around the sun. It, guess what? It still does, S-O-N. And he's the one that hangs it, holds it in the balance. But that speck of a solar system amidst our Milky Way galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy is 100,000 light years wide. And there's over, they say, that they know that they can count over a billion galaxies. And our galaxy is 100,000 light years wide. 100,000 times 5.8 trillion, or, or 5.8 trillion miles. Think of that. 5.8 trillion times 100,000. Here's the, this analogy that a scientist at NASA said. It would be like taking a quarter. Our, our, our solar system in our galaxy is like a quarter and drop it on the North American continent, and that's our solar system amidst our galaxy. And there's billions of galaxies, and yet, this is what's crazy, and yet, Psalms 8 verse 4 tells us this, what is man? Angels are, angels that, that, that are not limited by this, this body, this natural body, that can be at the speed of thought, wherever. What is this creature? What is this man that you're so mindful of him? What is, what, what, what is it that, about this that, that you would care for him? If I could leave you with anything today, I'd leave you with just that first, that last thought, that you would care for him. Who is this man that you the creator of everything would care for that. Not just, the, not just your size, but your breath. The length of your days. Yet he knows every hair on your head. Yet he has enough things to keep in balance. But yet, not one thing, not one day goes by without him noticing and without him desiring to be a part of your every breath, your every conversation. My every conversation. He wants me to pour my heart out to him. He wants me to, to see his greatness, to see his goodness, to see his might. And this, this, these words that, that often I'm that is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. We don't say those words enough. They are the basis of all that we hold and, and breathe, and that we're breathing, that we're sitting here, that God is all-knowing. He's omniscient. He's, he's om, omnipotent. He's, he's all-powerful. He's everywhere at once. Omnipresent. Omni means all. This is the God that we serve. This is what he's trying, they're trying to talk. This is the only way that we know how to kind of box God in and we just say all. The best box that I could ever, if I'm going to grasp my finances, if I'm going to grasp fundamentally anything, I'm going to have to omni. All. Oh, it's all. He's, he's all-knowing. That means he was at this era. He knew the end from the beginning and the law that he laid. 
The rules that he laid, the laws that he laid, listen, they transcend time, they transcend generation. The laws, the creation, the way he created us, it transcends every era, it transcends every law, because he is all-knowing. He's all-powerful. There's nothing too hard, there is nothing too hard for him. He's all present. There, where, the Bible says, where can, where can I go to hide from you? If I go to the depths of hell, are you not there? If I go here, are you not there? Where can I go? I can go nowhere. Why? He's always listening. He's always present. Should that scare you? No, but I think it should, we should have a little bit of reverential awe and fear of the Lord, realizing that the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present one wants to have a conversation with you and with me, and yet somehow I find the nerve, well, this is next week, to talk back. You ever talk back to your dad? How many of you know that really gains favor? I got one in the front row, a teenager, wonderful kid. Have you ever talked back once or twice, maybe once, just once? That would, did that work out real well for you? It doesn't. It doesn't gain favor. Did it change my love? It didn't change my love, but it limited access to some of the things that my heart desired to bring him. Listen to this, Psalms 103. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving devotion for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those that fear him. Listen, like there is something about you, you and me, this compassion. In other words, your reverential awe of the Lord it means this. You stand humbly under him. You can't access what his love has offered without honor or fear of him. That's how you receive Jesus. You had to stand in awe. You had to let coach teach. You had to let what he had to say change your form, change your shot, allow you to try to start to, to dribble the ball even though you, you can't. Even though you're not good at it, even though you're going to have to allow him, you're going to have to come underneath of what he says so that you can tap into what he's provided. Salvation. God so loved the world that he gave, right? He's given. But yet you access it. It is by grace, but it is through your choice, your surrender to what he has to say. That's how I get in on anything that he's provided. Listen to this, Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 through 14. We're cruising here. We're almost, we're almost wrapping up here. He says, Then I looked and I heard the voices of many angels and living creatures and elders and throne, and throne, uh, encircling the throne. And their number was like thousands upon thousands. So this is heaven, the throne room of heaven. And this is what it looks like in heaven. There, there was a loud voice. In a loud voice they said, You don't know anything. My life revolves, everything revolves around. No, listen, this is heaven where they see everything clearly. What does it look like if this was my, my statement down here? I can have heaven here on earth. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Here on earth as it is in heaven. The most fundamental thing, everything, this is not a series about finances. This is a series about bringing heaven to earth. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven to pour out upon you that, that which you don't have room enough to receive see if listen this is foundational how do I bring heaven father you're worthy oh you're worthy everything that I have if I don't see him as being worthy listen worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the lamb that paid the price 
for me, that has been searching for me, and still stands at the door of my heart, and still knocks, even when I just tell him no, even when I just say not now, even when I say I'm busy, even when I say he still stands at the door and knocks, and this is why they're standing and going, worthy, worthy, you're so worthy, you're so good, you're so wonderful, I, I would never have been as good as you, but you've been so good, you're so worthy, you're worthy of my praise, you're worthy of my life, you're worthy of everything. Oh, we bow down. We give you praise. This is for ages and ages to come. Our eyes will be open and we'll see clearly how many times he knocked, how many times he came, how many times he loved, and he's not quitting. He's worthy. And how he judged me by his son because I couldn't pay the price. He said, I want to pay the price for them. What can I do? I can give my son. That's what I can do. Worthy is the lamb to receive power. Worthy is the lamb to receive riches. In other words, Father, whatever I have in my possession, this is the most fundamental thing you and I could establish. Whatever it is I have, if it's like Landon was said, playing the guitar and singing a song. Whatever it is that I have, worthy are you. Whatever power, whatever is within my grasp or my ability to do, Father, you're worthy of that. You look at the early church and they sold homes and gave lands and all. Whatever was within my power to say, because it was so fresh to them at that time that they couldn't make a way to God. But God made a way when I couldn't make a way God, what could I not give you? Everything I have is yours. This is heaven on earth. Worthy is the Lamb. They're going to know because of our love for one another. What I have, when I come and I see somebody, that which I have, Paul said, hey, Peter, he said, I, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. There's things that we carry that we've got to realize that it, it, it's, it, they're not mine, they're his. Wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Father, we bless you. Not curse you. Not blame you like Job. Father, we bless you. Father, thank you. Not thank him for the evil. Thank him for being good. See how Jesus, how Jesus he came. He says, I, I'm the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. But Satan's come to steal. He's come to kill. He's come to destroy. But I've come that you would have life and you'd have it more abundantly. How can you not say, Father, you're worthy. You're worthy. Who's worthy? All powerful. All knowing. All, listen, all loving. Because he loves me. Because he loves me. Because he loves me. Listen, because he loves you. Because he loves you. Why do I give all that I have? All power. All, all omni. Because he loves me. Because he's worthy. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under earth in the sea and all that is in them saying to him that sits on the throne listen he sits on the throne whether it's in my life or not he sits on the throne and to the lamb to you be praise and honor and glory and power forever and the four living creatures said amen and the elders bowed down and worshipped. Those that were in the high seat, those that everyone looked up to, you businessman, you leader, you pastor of the church, what does it look like to call God worthy? What does it look like to fall before His throne daily before I, and just say, God, you're worthy. Oh, thank you, Lord. So whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, 
You want to see increase in your life? How do you find it? All. Fundamentally, if I could teach my kids, I teach my kids this all the time. We talked about this yesterday after a basketball game. All. All. I, I want to close this. Are you, what does all look like to you? This is an invitation to, not a request from. This is an invitation to, not a request from. We're not taking an offering. This is not a manipulative thing. But I am standing here as a priest of the Lord that would make a, a statement to you what God says, what offering will you bring me, the Lord? What offering will you bring him who is worthy who was slain. What offering? Sometimes it's our precious things. You know the Bible talks about how don't cast your pearls before swine. Sometimes it's our precious things that which we hold really dear. Those little, those things that, that they're small but they're little and we don't see them really, they're precious to us but we don't see them having big significance among the crowd. That we just... Just keep to us. But what, what about those, those pearls? What about those? And I'm not talking about pearls money. I'm talking about the gifts on the inside. Those little things. Those little things that God calls precious. How are you using those? As we sit here. This morning as we come. Probably the most detrimental thing that we could ever do. Is let our service to the creator of the he, of the he, our service to the creator of the heavens and the earth the one that was slain for us is to let our service simply become repetition i'm going to bring the same gift i'm going to sing the same song i'm just going to do the same thing that's not a sacrifice He's worthy of me laying down. You know, it's a sacrifice. One of the greatest sacrifices you'll ever do is to declare the good news to somebody and be more concerned about their well-being than your own. What does it look like this morning if he was to say to you, I want your all? You know, to everyone here, that means something different in the moment. To some of you, he's been dealing with you about finances and the fact that you're not tithing. To some of you, you're tithing and you're giving, and he's talking about generosity. To some of you, it's talking about not money at all. It's talking, he's talking very directly to you about sharing that good news, that message, and that person. Every time you come in contact with him, you see and you get that cue, the Lord says, hey, he says, hey, he says, release that to me. Give that precious, what so many times is so precious to us is the view of ourself in another's eyes, yet we can't see from theirs. Give me that. Maybe, maybe one of the things you've been holding on to so hard is your child. And he's saying, when I say give me all, I say, give me all of your children. Just release, release them to me. Release that care. Well, I'm telling you, what does it look like to give him all this morning? We're going to close here. And I wanted to take this time of worship. And I wanted us just to, and I didn't read out of Malachi this morning. I quoted there, but he talks about how you rob me in tithes and offerings. And this whole picture here is this picture of bringing to the house of the Lord a sacrifice. He said, you bring me these lame goats. You bring me these blind, deaf animals that are going to die anyways. I'm not pleased with that. Would your governor be pleased with that? Would your mayor be pleased with that? Yet I'm the creator. Give me your best. And the whole picture is this, laying our lives down. That's sacrifice. 
All that we are. And you know what will happen? When you lay your life down, this is crazy. When you offer things to the Lord, the Bible raises it up. When you lay it down, it's amazing how God just does something with it. You bring it down, you just, heaven gets involved. And I know heaven wants to get involved with us today. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're great. Somebody's telling him he's great. Father, you're great. You're worthy of praise. Worthy. You're so worthy. You're worthy of every heartbeat. You're the one that holds our very breath. You're worthy, Lord. Lord, open our eyes today. Just tell him. Say, Father, open my eyes. Say, open my eyes to see your greatness, to see your love, to see your goodness. Father, let me see you clearly. Put awe. I position myself to to see you clearly. Putting awe. Thank you for putting awe in our hearts for you again. Awe as in great reverence. Awe as in great love and cherish. Father, we give you this morning our hearts. We give you our lives. If you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life before we go today, I'm going to be down here with a team uh, of, of, of uh, leaders and pastors up here. We'd love to pray with you down front. But I'm telling you tonight, this morning, just make your chair right now during this song an, uh, an altar where you just give God your all. Whatever it is that He would be asking in your heart, give that to Him this morning. Just no limits. Tell him, no limits. Why? Because he's wanting to open the doors of heaven to you. Take the doors off. He's taking the doors off today. Release. Release. What he's calling your all. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name.